Hello, so today I'm just going to show you how to make a really simple photography zine. Um, I'll go through how to design pages, print pages, and then finally bind all your pages together. So the first step is to make a small sample book like this. So I've just made this out of scrap paper. This is really useful because it shows you how many pages you need to design. Um, it also shows you how to format your pages, so which numbers need to be together for printing. So if you grab some scrap paper and then start writing the page numbers on them, so that's front and back, and then one, two, three, four, and so on. So when we come to design and format our pages, this is really useful because it will show us which numbers we need to format together before printing. This will make more sense as we um, start designing on Photoshop. Um, so when we come to print, this will be really useful as it shows us which pages need to be printed together double-sided. So I've just got an example of that just to show you. So nine and 10 will be the center of my book. So nine and 10 are printed together. But then on the other side, so double-sided printing, 11 and 8 will need to be formatted and printed together so that when we fold them into our book they will make sense. So I'll just quickly show you that. So our centre page will be folded out. So it will make sense. So the first step is to make that small sample book. This is a great chance as well to decide how many pages you want to um, design. So these zines are part of your brief, both GCSE and A-level. So it's a great way of displaying your work in a physical format and seeing how your images work together. So for my um, zine today. I'm going to work with a fashion editorial for Nylon and V Magazine title from the GCSE 2D Design Brief. So I'm going to look at images from the photographer Bettina de Troyes and other fashion photographers as well and then creating almost um, an artist research file with my zine. So the first step is to open a new page on um, Photoshop. So I'm working A4 landscape. Okay, and zoom out so you can see the whole page. Then with your move tool at the side, just grab hold of the ruler on the left hand side and it will bring out this guide. And then find the middle of the page. So the ruler, as it finds the middle of the page, will actually snap to the middle. So it's there. And then that will stay there whilst you design all of your pages. That guideline will actually show you the crease, so the fold in our book. So that will be the centre of our book. So that's quite good to keep in mind when you're designing your pages. If you're going to have images that are overlapping or you want images that meet exactly in the middle, etc. Okay. So then I'm going to grab my first image. So this is from fashion photographer Joella Grace Taylor. And then you can work with your imagery, enlarging it, making it smaller, and see how it works on the page. And then I'm going to grab my other photo by the same artist. Okay, and I'm going to move that to one side. So I want this image to meet right up into the fold, so I'm going to enlarge it. Thinking about which colours I want more on my image, so I'm going to put that there so you can see more of the yellow. Okay, and then you can work with your other image to see how this works with the other. So for my Zine, I'm thinking a lot about colour. So at the beginning of my zine, I look more at Bettina de Troyes, hazy, pastel-y colours, whereas at the end, I'm looking at photographers that use more contrasting colour, 
high vibrancy, etc. Okay, and then when you're happy with the placement of your imagery, I'm going to title my page with the photographer's name, so Jola Grace Taylor. Okay, and then thinking about the design of my text, so which colour I think would work well. And then using my move tool to move it into position. Okay, so when you're happy with the design of your page, when you're working like this, this would be as you fold your page out. So this would be page one, page two. So they're a whole page together. So the next step is to merge all your layers together. So that is one page design. Because of the way that we're going to print, we need to separate these into one page one and page two. So a way of doing this is to dupl duplicate this layer so by pulling it down to this plus. Two. So then take your first one. So if we're thinking of this as page one, we'll get rid of page two. So this is quite nice and handy that you have that guide in the middle because it will snap and be perfect. So that's my first page. So over here, if you double tap, you can rename it. So page one. Okay, and then deselect. And then we want to get rid of the imagery we already have. So it's on page one. Okay, and then rename that one. So this is page one and page two, but together they make one single page. And then you can design your pages using this same technique. Once you have designed all of your pages, it will look something like this. So one, two, three, four, up until 18. When you're designing the front cover, think about where your fold will be. So as the book opens, this will actually be the front cover and then this will be the back. So just think about that when you're designing your front cover. Okay, so in regards to the little book we made at the beginning to show us how our book needs to be printed, you'll work in a sequence like this. So if you open your first page and your 18th page, this will be the printout that we need. So if you go to File, Save As, and you make a folder of where you want yours to be, so mine is in Fashion Zine Pages, go to JPEG and then name your page, so page one. So for the next JPEG, we need to tick off 18 and put 17 on, and then tick off one and go up to two. So this is the same sequence each time. So when we've done with two, we'd go to three, and then four, and working downwards from 17, 16, 15. So this page is set two and 17, so save as JPEG two. Three. There we go, and then we will carry that on until we have all of our pages saved as JPEGs. Okay, so when you have all of your pages saved as JPEGs, we're then ready to print. So with the small book that we created earlier, use this as a guideline to show you what needs to be printed together. So on my small book that I created earlier, it says that the front and page 1 and 18 have to be printed together. So for us, that's the front and then page 1. You would select these both and then press double click them together. It would then come up like this. You would then press File and print and then send to printer.
Okay, so once you've printed out all of your pages, it should look something like this. I would recommend test printing at least one of your pages before printing out your whole book, just to make sure that the printer is doing what you'd hoped it would. Um, the printer at school, when printing double-sided, prints one side upside down, so doing that test print was really useful before I sent all my pages to print. Okay. So the next step is to fold our pages. So I'm folding mine in half. So finding the edge. At school we have these book binding tools which are called bone folders, which you use to neatly fold down your edges. If you're at home and you don't have one of these, then using the side of a ruler is completely fine. When folding down your edges, make sure you're quite gentle and just so that you don't ruin or damage your print. Okay, and then just repeat this on all of your pages. The next step is to put, put your book all together. So finding the front and then finding each page. until you found the middle. When working with a book of this size, just to make it even easier for myself, I would half the papers that I'm working with. Um, just give them a tap, just to make sure they're all in the same position. And then using a bulldog clip, just secure your pages together. This means that when we're piercing the holes ready for binding, then it, they will all meet along our folded edge. If you haven't got a bulldog clip at home, then using a paper clip is fine and even a hair grip will work. Okay. So the next step is to mark out our, where we're going to pierce our holes. At school, the printer, because it didn't fill the page before printing, it has left a white edge. So it's actually half a centimetre each side. So I need to take this into consideration when marking out my dots. So. Okay, so I'm just actually going to mark out that half centimetre so that I know where my book starts. my ruler along that edge. Now I can mark out my dot. So that's exactly 20 centimetres. So I'm going to mark out every two centimetres. So when I'm piercing my book, my first piercing will be at two centimetres and my last piercing will be at 18 centimetres. This means that there's two centimetres from the edge on both sides, so it's exactly equal. I'm just got, if you've got a um, cutting mat, then that's perfect, but I'm just gonna use a piece of cardboard for now. So this is another book binding tool, it's called an awl. We have a few of these at school, and some of you even have them in the bookbinding kits that we gave you. Okay, so I'm going to line up my ruler to make it even easier, make sure I've got it nice and straight along that crease. And then with my awl, just pierce along my pierce where I've put my markings. So two. And then you would repeat that on your other set of pages and then we're ready to bind. In book binding there are many different ways to bind your books. This one for example is more decorative, this one is called a Japanese binding 
at school we have these books um, which show you the binding and then actually have the instructions of how to do it on the front page. Okay, and then it's really great to relate your binding to the content of your book. So this example is um, an image that I was manipulating on the scanner to create this glitch effect. So the whole book is this glitched um, imagery. For my binding, this is a twist binding, I've taken the colours that I've found within the glitch and used them along the edge of my book. So again, this is the same, same idea, taking the content and my ideas and showing that in my binding. So this one was looking at sea pollution, this netting that we often see, and then actually creating a rope effect with my binding, thinking about the colours as well. This orange is really similar to the orange within my book. Okay, and then this one again is a sea themed. So looking at fishermen knots and using that as my binding. Okay, so for our book, I'm just going to show you a simple dash technique. In book binding, it's quite common to find this waxed cord um, thread. This is, this is just to make it easier for you, um, as a lot of the time if you use something like embroidery thread, <clears throat> it's made up of single threads. So when you put your needle through, sometimes you can split the thread and it becomes quite messy. So that's why a lot of the time book binding is waxed cord. So um, it's also great to use embroidery thread, you just have to be a bit more careful with it. It's also fine to use something like sewing thread, which you can find just in the textiles room. Um, I would recommend maybe doubling up, tripling up, uh, just so you can really show off your binding and the colour. So for our book, I'm going to use this green embroidery thread, just because I think it works really well with my front cover, but also relates to some of the imagery in the centre of my book, where you'll also be able to see the binding. So I have just got a binding, book binding needle here. It's fine to use a sewing needle, a dialing needle might work better, just so that you can get your thread through the eye of the needle. Okay, so we're going to start with putting your needle through the first piercing. Try to make sure that you're guiding your needle through your pages. Because a lot of the time, if you're not looking, sometimes it can pop out in the centre and um, mess up your binding line. Okay, so just pull it through, but remember to leave a tail in the centre. This makes it easier when you're binding off at the end. Okay, a good tip when you're hand sewing is to make sure that you don't have too much excess thread so it can get quite tangly and then messy. Okay, so we're just gonna go through the second hole, again, guiding it through. Okay, and then back through the third. And then through the fourth. And then guiding it through. And you carry that sequence all the way to the end, so just following the sequence of piercings. So when you get to the end of your book, we're wanting to go back along the edge to fill in these gaps. So the next piercing that we have to go through is this one. So go back in, 
So when you're going into a piercing that already has thread in it, we need to make sure that we're not splitting our thread. So it's quite a good idea to just pull your threads out of the way when you're doing it. Okay, And then just follow the sequence that we did before, but just filling in the gaps this time. And then we're at the end of our binding. So if we take our thread off, we have two um, tails left. So you can just knot those to secure them. Pulling quite tight because we don't want the tension to be lost. Okay, and then that's the final binding. So you can, with these um, excess threads, just try and hide them. So I often put them under um, one of the dashes and then just try to extra secure them before cutting them completely. Pull these sharp scissors. Okay, and then that's the final binding. So we've got a nice neat edge in the center, as well as a nice neat edge on the outside. So that's quite a simple bind. Okay, and then here's my finished book. So it's all been bound. When designing on Photoshop, because my um, zine is all about colour, I added these elements that be, could be cut out so that when you look at a page, you can also see colours from the page before, but also introducing the next page as well. Um, also having parts as they are cut out on this page filled back in so this wasn't hasn't been as successful as I'd hoped but that's why it's really good to always um, print off your, a sample book before on just normal printing paper before you print on to your desired paper so that might be a different weight um, glossy all sorts also having cutouts that are different shapes so this page looks back onto this nice green, which ties in all these tones, as well as my binding and then the colors in this imagery as well. And a small cutout, so similar colors, picking out similar colors. So when I open my book, it's this really nice green um, and this nice scenery and it links back to my final page, which also has green and landscape imagery as well. <laughs> 